Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 26 of Twitch Tales, the enemy of my enemy. Where did we leave off last time? In episode 25, Apis started the, uh, the session having been hidden in the trees um, nearby a, a suspicious situation with an overturned cart on the road to Fonderg, between Fonderg and Shadridge. Uh, Apis was slow to trust, and it may have saved their life in this moment, because uh, in the moment that um, in the moment that Apis saw these uh, these people, it seemed like they were uh, in distress and travelers needing uh, of help. But as they snuck through the the trees to get a closer view, it seemed like all was not quite um, as it appeared. One of them called out to a thunderbolt, uh, whoever or whatever that was and asked, can you see them? Um, and then they seemed to notice you, despite your uh, sneaking through the trees, they seemed to notice you immediately after that and called you over to try and assist with your, uh, with, with the overturning of their cart. You, you uh, volunteered to go and get your own horse uh, and, and your friends that were uh, further up the road and bring them back. And as you did so, you noticed that they'd kind of followed you up there a little bit. You decided to lead your horse back into the trees in search of their horse that had run away. That's when you noticed that the larger of the three uh, members was coming up through the tree line towards you as the other two had kind of blocked your exit out of the tree line and, you, and your suspicion increased. Through a number of uh, exchanges of, of, of words, um, Apis realized that these guys were lying about uh, one thing or another and so they they tried to intimidate them into dropping the facade saying hey uh, I know that you know that you're lying why don't you just come clean uh, I don't want to have to hurt you and if you attack me this is not going to go well for you at which point one of them uh, a man we later to found out to be called Oliver said I'm afraid it's not going to go well for us either way um, and he took a crossbow off his shoulder and loaded it and said, we don't want to hurt you, just give us your stuff. The more brutish guy with the battle axe walked right up to us to try and take our stuff from us, at which point we uh, sort of handed out the rope that we were holding as if we were going to give it to him, but then said the command word of it, shot out a rope of entanglement and tried to entangle him. It, seemed, it succeeded uh, based on the merits of our lucky horseshoe, forcing him to re-roll his saving throw. Um, and uh, it tangled him up. That started combat. The guy with the crossbow, uh, instead of firing, gave us another warning to put down our stuff or face the consequences. We, they, don't, they really don't want to have to hurt us, he kept uh, reiterating. But the woman that was with him used her arcane abilities to fire a ray of frost at you. She missed, hit her friend. Um, the ambush did not go well. It seemed it seemed like right from the start these guys were not proficient muggers uh, or, or bandits. They were not. They hadn't done this a lot, uh, perhaps, or they were reluctant in doing this for some reason. They weren't. Uh, the ambush did not go smoothly. It was not a well practiced and well rehearsed thing, as if they'd done it lots before. The fight kicked off nevertheless, uh, we were fighting, Mel was fighting, everybody was fighting, um, things were not going well for Apis because of terrible rolls, um, the luck was not on our side, but luck started to turn uh, towards us in that we managed to get away from the guy with the battle axe, jump on board our, uh, our horse that we'd borrowed, that we'd nicknamed Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed unfortunately got a shot from a crossbow. Took a massive amount of damage, more than half their hit points, which made them roll on the, um, which made them roll on the, uh, the the massive damage table in my home home rules, and they went down hard, boom, throwing you from them. Mr. Ed is now uh, at zero hit points and and um, uh, having to make death saving throws. I believe we decided at the end of last episode that they had failed one and succeeded one. We ran over to the woman, who by now was unconscious on the ground, having been stung to zero hit points by Mel's uh, stinger and poison. And we and we aimed down at her with our own bow and arrow and said, uh, "Put down your weapons, or I'll kill her." It was a bluff on Apis's part because they're not they're not one to try and kill. Um, uh, they're not one to try and kill unarmed and defenseless people on the ground. 
but they didn't know that it was a bluff and they dropped their weapons. In doing so, they seemed to anger Thunderbolt, who by now had revealed themselves to be a roguelike character who was hidden in the trees, attacking us from afar. Thunderbolt seemed to be the only one who was more proficient in ambushing and, uh, and, and attacking um, strangers in this way, and seemed to almost revel in it. They shouted that uh, Phagos would, would uh, devour them for this. They'll see to it personally. Thunderbolt shouted that they should be uh, they, they, they should be ashamed of themselves for being traitors, and Mel went over to try and get up all in his grill and uh, and prevent him from doing anything too hostile, and that's exactly where we end off with uh, with two of the muggers unarmed um, and and uh, succumbing to our our bluff. Um, one of the muggers unconscious on the ground with Mel's poison still cursing through her veins. And one of the muggers, uh, a rogue called Thunderbolt, um, currently melee battling with Mel. So we're going to head on over there. But first, I've just noticed that these spell berries need to be turned off because we've used two of the three of our spells for the day. We've also used the Lucky Horseshoe for the day. I believe we might still have inspiration. <coughs> At work now, so make sure he counts two death saves for the horse, please. Suc succeeded two? I'm pr uh, we definitely failed one. No, maybe we didn't definitely fail one. I play a lot of D&D &D through the week, so it could be that they're starting to blend together. I will I will, uh, um, I will, will defer to your judgment there, Ajo, and say that the, uh, the, death, uh, the horse has succeeded two death saving throws. Let's head on over to the battle map, and we shall see more specifics of what's going on right now. All right, so you can see below me, we have a longbow, we have a longsword, and we have planar warrior. However, the longsword that we have is actually, let me actually, um, just so we don't forget it, let me draw a little longsword, because we dropped it earlier in the fight. We dropped it early in the fight, and Oliver, this gentleman here, he picked it up. So the longsword is there. We also dropped our uh, we dropped our rope of climbing as well. Is there a brown? That's close enough to brown, I guess. We dropped our rope of uh, rope of entanglement and rope of climbing, which is all tangled up there. We, as Apis. Ah, currently wounded, as you can see, we are less than half of our hit points, we're at 17 of 45 hit points, we are the, with a wounded condition. This lady is uh, unconscious, let's give her a little, uh, let's give her a little token of some sort, this one with the eyes closed to show that she's unconscious. She's stable, as is the nature of uh, Mel's poison, she's stable but she's conscious. Our horse, however, is, uh, is not stable, she, he is unconscious, wounded, and down. And then this guy here, who we've learned to be called Morn. Morn is uh, on half his hit points or less. Um, he's taken 16 damage that we know of. Um, Oliver has taken no damage and she's taken enough damage to go down to zero. And then up here is Thunderbolt the Rogue. Thunderbolt is hiding in a bush, attacking Mel or being attacked by Mel. Mel is currently at 28 hit points out of 30. Thunderbolt was part of this initiative, and these guys, the the uh, other other bandits, have con uh, are now considered allies rather than uh, bandits because they've succumbed to your bluff. Not only did they succumb to your bluff, but uh, Oliver, this guy here, shouted to Morn that maybe she can help us. Um, uh, maybe she can help us fight back. It seems like they are doing things, from what Apis has gathered with their rather insightful um, mind, Apis has gathered that these guys are reluctant bandits and they are being forced to rob and steal from people um, for somebody else, in service of someone or something else. That's as much as we managed to glean from the fight. He's not in a stable, he's in a forest. Ayo! <laughs> nice, Spidey, nice. We are, because Thunderbolt is still aggressive towards us, and Mel is still fighting them, 
we are going to continue in initiative order, especially because we have uh, a horse that is still making death saves. So time is of the essence and turn based um, is important. So we will start with Mel's turn. Mel has used her once per day militia um, and used her once per day uh, soporific spores. Um, actually, is it once per day or is it? Oh no, short, soporific spores recharges on a short rest. That's going to be useful. Summon Swarm is, is once per day though. Mel is going to take her turn. She is going to attack the, uh, the rogue in front of her who has as yet taken no damage. You can see the uh, the little dice cam here. Uh, just give me a second. I'm actually going to turn this dice cam upside down because otherwise it's confusing to me. Uh, let's go flip, flippity dip. Uh, how do I flip it? I flip it horizontal, flip it vertical. How do I want to turn it? Transform. Rotate 180 degrees. Boom, that's better. Cool. These are Mel's dice look with the lovely uh, lovely bee uh, theme throughout them. I'm going to make an attack for Mel. I have her stats up on the wall next to me. So her stinger is a plus six, plus, plus six to hit. That's pretty sweet. Ah, oh, it's because she's got a dexterity plus four these days because she leveled up dex plus two. Bruh. All right, so that, if you can see, is a four. A four. Plus six is a 10. 10 is not hit his AC. So as she goes in for the sting, she tries to uh, stick him with it and, and he manages to put his hands up and like grab the majority of her body around her stinger and, and uh, hold it off from hitting into it, his face. He pushes her back and she rights herself with her wings. She's still in that space, but she missed with the attack. Um, Mel is gonna stay where she is though to keep putting the pressure on him. However, she doesn't realize that Thunderbolt has, uh, as a rogue, has disengage as a bonus. So he's going to disengage from her and then he's going to move around her to here. Uh, he's going to run past here and he says, um, enjoy your last moments alive as he runs. He's gonna jump over this uh, little rog log here and then he's gonna dash as his action with a, uh, as a rogue, he can disengage as a bonus and then dash as his action, uh, getting a total of 60 feet. Oliver at this looks terrified and turns uh, turns to you and says, don't let him get to him. We gotta take him out. Do we still have our a reaction prepared on Thunderbolt attacking? Well remembered Sparrow fly away. So at the end of our turn, we took the ready action uh, to loose a bolt if we needed to. Although we were bluffing against one of these guys, the the trigger was if anybody does an offensive uh, action towards us. So although he hasn't done an offensive action towards us, he has just told us that he's going to run off and get Phagos, who will devour us for this. Um, and so I'm, I'd, I'd say that that's enough to trigger our, our readied action. So as he runs past and says, enjoy your last moments alive, we whip our, uh, our bow around and take a shot off at him as he runs. These are Apis's dice. Check out Apis's lovely dice here. Very sparkly, pretty dice, like gemstones. Um, now, unfortunately, with the readied action, it's using your reaction to attack, not the attack action, and so you don't get like you don't get any bonuses like that you normally only get when you take the attack action. Uh, you would still get Hunter's Mark if you had Hunter's Mark open. Uh, you'd still get any of the other sorts of things like that but you can't use um, this thing that's hidden by the dice cam. You can't use your planar warrior because you're not using a bonus action. It's not a proper, hey, look at that. Can you see it? Maybe that needs to be larger without moving it. Ooh, nat 20. Ooh, that's gonna, that's gonna help in a tremendous way. That is gonna help in a way that you have no idea right now. <sighs> All right. We, we release our, our our arrow at this guy. As he runs past, he gets to about here. As he says, uh, uh, enjoy your last moments alive. We loose our arrow through and shoom, let's see how much damage it does first and then I can describe whether or not it hurts or kills him. 
So the way that I do nat 20s is it automatically maxes out the damage that it could have done, which from a, uh, a longbow is a d8. So you've got 8 damage, plus the 3 from your dexterity, so you're already doing 11 damage, and then you roll one more time with the, uh, with the damage dice. So we're doing 11 plus 5. You have got to be kidding me. All right, 11 plus 5 is 16 damage. With the green screen, you're probably not going to be able to tell, but uh, and without giving too much away about other people, you're just going to have to take my word for it. Maybe if I can cover everything up. Thunderbolt has, I wonder if it's going to show, HP, 16. Thunderbolt has exactly 16 hit points, <laughs> and we did exactly 16 damage with our, uh, <laughs> with our attack. So just as Oliver says, don't let him get away! <laughs> We spin around, loose the arrow, and as much as Apis is uh, not exactly a pacifist, it says you will on uh, Apis will only kill when necessary. Apis has no qualms about killing when it is necessary, so they will kill when when it is necessary. And when Oliver, the person who was uh, clearly trying not to hurt us, tells us this guy needs to go down, Apis in that moment realizes, especially with um, with with Thunderbolt's words of warning towards us. We realise this guy's dangerous, and if he gets away, we are in a lot of trouble. We spin round, let loose the arrow. The arrow spin, uh, flies through the trees. It's got that slow motion wobble that happens from it. The archer's paradox. And as he runs, he, he, he leans towards us, and he's he's shouting his last words of "Enjoy your last moments alive." Poof! It hits him right below the cheek, uh, the the uh, zygomatic cheekbone here. It goes right in through underneath his eye. His eye, his eye seems to bulge out to the side for a split second before the arrow comes penetrating out the back of his head. <laughs> Bam! He goes down hard. I'm not even going to allow him death saving throws because it was a critical hit, so why not? Wham! He goes skidding over the top of that um, tree and hits the ground hard on the other side. And Apis has immediately re redeemed themselves from the shitty rolls that we were having last time. That has, that has saved us quite a bit of hassle. <laughs> Another beautiful bedtime story. All right. So, in this moment, we are no longer in uh, in combat <laughs> initiative, as uh, as this has solidified for the two remaining conscious bandits that we are not to be messed with. We are stronger than we look, and and they have they've uh, they've ambushed the wrong person. So keeping their head, hands up, um, they sort of look at each other, look down at, at uh, the lady on the ground, and say and say, "Look, I'm sorry that we attacked you, but we can explain everything. I think you might be able to help us out here." And with that, it moves away from Thunderbolt's turn. Thunderbolt, where are you in the initiative? You can disappear. Pop. It is back to Apis's turn. The reason that we are still in initiative order is that we still have somebody who is dying, somebody who is in death saving throw mode. Uh, the horse will be going on our allies' turn, and so at the start of the allies' turn, we will be rolling another death save for that horse. So, Apis, what do you do in this moment? Um, Start giving me suggestions in the chat, and I might either put it to a poll or I might choose somebody to uh, choose somebody specifically using Nightbot. Save the horse, save the horse, save the horse. So there are two ways that we can possibly save the horse. If you want to use the last spell slot that you have for the day on the horse, then you can cure wounds them. They will come back to consciousness immediately. They will heal 1d8 plus your uh, wisdom, modif wisdom modifier. Yeah. Uh, so they'll heal 1d8 plus 2, I think it is. Alternatively, if you don't want to use your last spell slot for the day, you can uh, you can do a medicine check on the horse. A medicine check of a DC 10 will stabilize the horse. However, in my home games, I rule that if you get a nat 1 on a medicine check, you actually make it worse, and you cost them a death saving throw. They fail a death save, but only on a nat 1. So just to, uh, just to be clear, the main page, you can see the wisdom over there has a plus two. And under skills, we don't have medicine. So we are not proficient in medicine. We, we can still make a medicine check, but it's a, it's, uh, we'll be rolling and adding two, and we need a 10 or more. 
We can eat the horse to gain its strength. <laughs> Mel can poke the woman. Yes, that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, we have seen Mel do this before, so we know she has it. She has an ability called Adrenaline Injection. Mel can sting a living creature on zero hit points and cause them to gain hit points equal to 1d8 plus their constitution modifier. So Mel could also, the something else in that poll could be that we tell Mel to heal the horse instead of us. Mel could either heal the unconscious woman or the horse right now with her adrenaline uh, injection. They wake up in 1d4 minutes. That's a home rule. Because in reality, if you're unconscious for more than a few minutes, that you, you're going to wake up with serious brain damage. Does the unconscious woman need healing? She's stable, but she'll uh, she'll she'll potentially need some healing. She'll come. She'll get one hit point back in a uh, in about one d four minutes. All right, with forty three percent of the vote, twenty people, um, we've got uh, that Mel is going to do. Uh, sorry, that we are going to do a medicine check on the horse. So at, at this moment, when we shoot this guy <laughs> dead with our reaction. Um, we then look across to the guy, the uh, other two to see that they're not going to be uh, 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 in any sort of um, uh, offensive way towards us in any way. Um, and then we noticing that they've still got their hands up and they, and they want our help. Uh, I, uh, Apis says, right, uh, I'm, I'm willing to help you, but I need to ch uh, check that my, this horse is uh, alive first. I'm, uh, it's not my horse. So we run over to the horse. Uh, this guy actually runs down to that. Um, I will say, he says, oh, here, I can help. And then because he's right after us in the initiative order, we can essentially take the uh, the ready action to help when he assists. So he comes down. He starts uh, helping us with the medicine check, which actually gives us advantage on the check. Uh, where's the d20? There it is. Advantage on the check means you roll twice, take the higher of the two numbers. Uh, that is a 14 or a 4, so 14 plus our medicine of 2 is 16. 16 is enough to stabilize the horse with this guy's help. With his help, we staunch the bleeding. The horse is stable and will wake up in 4 minutes. Uh, the lady on the ground will wake up in 3. Alright, so no, now we are no longer in initiative order necessarily because uh, there's nobody dying, there's nobody bleeding out. The one thing that we do notice as this guy is helping us with horses is that he is very good with horses. It seems he knows he knows what he's doing. He's, he 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 helps. Uh, he understands the anatomy of one, and he's he's trying to staunch bleeding. And he he helps you uh, to to hold the uh, wound, hold around the wound as you pull the the crossbow bolt out of its back end, and and he pr quickly puts a lot of pressure on. So that's sticking some gauze on there that he's got in his pack or something. Um, <clears throat> so we're out of initiative order now. We can uh, we can just go back into what do you guys want to do at this point? Um, Oliver starts to uh, stroll over. He actually brings his uh, he, br he actually brings these swords over to you. So that, can I just select them? There we go. He brings the sword and the rope over to you, and with a sheepish look on his face, he hands them back to you and says, "I'm again. I'm sorry for what happened. Uh, you take your stuff back." So we've still we've got our sword and our our rope. We say, "What's start talking? What's all this about?" And uh, and are there going to be ramifications for this? You point over to Thunderbolt. Um, Oliver says, "I'm I I don't know where to begin." And he he walks over to uh, the rogue. And he checks that he's definitely dead. Sees the head wound and sort of winces a little and goes, um, for, to answer your second question first, there won't be ramifications from anyone that we know. He had no family, no friends. He worked for Phagos, uh, and unlike the rest of us, he was working for him willingly. He enjoyed the power. To be honest, he's a psychopath. And as he says that, he kicks him in the lower back. <sighs> Phagos is a manticore. He has roamed these woods for some time. 
he ambushes people on the way and then he takes anything useful that he can from them he keeps them if he feels like they'll be helpful in furthering his ambushes and he uh, he keeps them in line with violence and um, and other things um, I, I can't talk about it much uh, he walks over to the lady and, and kneels down next to her to check that she's okay is she dead um, and you've seen Mel sting before and uh, at this point Mel buzzes over to you lands on the, the horse and is like uh, what is happening are, are we not fighting anymore and you quickly turn to her and tell her and Sylvan uh, uh, no, we're not fighting. Uh, they they want our help. There's um there's some. He was a bad guy, but the rest of them, I think, they were just doing things because they had no choice. I'll tell you about it in a second once I know more. Um, we turn back to them and uh, and Morn says, "Were you just, were you just talking to her? Like you talk, you, you just talking to this bee?" And you say, "Uh, yeah, she speaks Sylvan." Um, and he goes, "Bloody hell." Uh, all right. Hello, <laughs> wave said her. She doesn't understand common. Um, is 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 she gonna be okay? Oliver asks again, and you say, "Oh, um, e e uh, Scottish. Uh, yeah, I think she'll be fine. I've I've seen Mill sting before. Uh, it's like a paralyzing poison, but she's um, she should be fine. It it doesn't stay. It doesn't uh, it doesn't kill them. It stay it like." Just puts them into a st uh, uh, their body into a sort of a stasis where they can't move anymore. Uh, he looks down at her and, and her eyes kind of twitch and come back uh, to consciousness. But then she starts to look around like uh, she starts to sort of jerk in a way that like her muscles aren't quite working for her, <clears throat> and she's li like really trying to sit up. And he just like puts his hand on her shoulder and he's like, "Just, just calm down, Felicity. It's fine. We're, we're okay. We're okay." And she's like, she realizes at this point she can't even open her jaw. She can't move. With uh, with Apis's uh, sorry, with Mel's sting, it says that if the target is taken to zero hit points, the target is stable but poisoned for one hour, even after regaining hit points, and is paralyzed while poisoned in this way. So she will remain poisoned and paralyzed for an hour unless we can do anything to remove the poison, like with an antidote or a, a, a cure, a lay on hands or anything like that. I don't believe we have anything like that, so she's just going to be poisoned for an hour. Um, Oliver quickly explains the situation to Felicity, who uh, seems confused in the in the small amounts that she can move her facial m muscles, and also just more than a little bit scared. You um, le lean over her and kind of, hello. Sorry that this had to go the the way that it went, um, and Oliver says it. <laughs> She's, you're sure she'll be fine? Do we need to get her to a hospital? Or, um, I, I, I'm not sure, but I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. She should be, she should be okay, I think. And Mel says, uh, she should be fine in a little bit of time. Normally, uh, normally the purpose of my poison is to is to incapacitate something that is attacking me so that I can get away, or that I can, uh, you know, eat it or something. But uh, I, I very rarely need to eat the things that I'm attacking. <laughs> Pollen and flowers don't fight back that much. <laughs> and we translate that for them. Uh, Mel says she should be fine in a little bit of time. Um, but more to the point, you're working for a manticore. And Mon goes, yeah. Yeah, big bastard too. And where, where are you all from? What's, wh how, did you, how did you start working for a manticore? And uh, Mon says, well... I, um, let me pull up my notes here to get this right. One says, um, <laughs> I was, uh, I was actually on my way to Shedridge. Um, I was, I was going to be a job, I was going to have a, a job as a farrier. Um, I'd been in touch with a, a blacksmith, Carl, um, and he said that his, his job was getting quite a bit, uh, quite a bit busier these days since the town had grown. Uh, he's a cousin of mine. And he and he said that um, being the blacksmith, the Fletcher, 
uh, the the everyday run of the mill go to handyman kind of guy, and also the farrier. It was getting a bit much, and he knew that I was good with horses, so uh, they were going to build me a house, and I was going to move out there. Yeah, for me that was about a week ago. Um, and and what happened? Well, on the way, uh, I was travelling with um, a squire. Uh, no, what, what do you call him? And he turns to Oliver, and he says, um, "You would have been with a squire." Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I was travelling with a squire, and um, we get ambushed by these folk. And Oliver sort of puts his head down in uh, very visible shame. He says, uh, "They took our took our stuff. Uh, took us to um, took us further up into the trees to uh, Phagos's lair. And then he gave us the choice of uh, who's gonna." Who's gonna stick around to fight with him, and who's gonna um, not? And I chose to stick around, given the alternative. There's a moment of silence where you realise, perhaps, perhaps he doesn't really want to go into the details of what the alternative was. Why didn't you run? Why didn't you left? <laughs> and Mon laughs. Uh, Mon laughs, and Oliver sort of groans, and uh, and and they both almost simultaneously say, "There's no running. We can't." He says, uh, <laughs> "The squire I was with, James. He uh, he tried to run. <laughs> you don't run from Phagos. It's what he wants." He enjoys the run. What was the alternative? Fergus needs to eat. And he offered us the choice to either work for him or fulfill that need for him. So that's what happened. Um, Oliver says it's I that's basically what happened to me as well I was um, I was on my way to Shadridge to become a knight of Kvosna. Um I was actually a prospective squire I hadn't been working for them for very long um, but I was with uh, I was with a squire Jonathan um, and we were attacked. Fagos actually attacked us directly. And he gave us the same choice. We can we can work for him or we can uh, do something else for him. Um, Jonathan was quite headstrong and thought that he could fight back. And I... Uh, I watched him I watched him get eaten. He started with his feet. He was watching me the whole time. Phagos would look at me, staring at me. I tried to I tried to run at one point when my legs started working again. There's no running from him. He knows these woods. We can't, we can't run. We've, we, we, our only option is to fight. And and seeing the way that you fought, I think you can help us. I really do. I think you can help us. If she's going to be okay, if you if you're sure that she's going to be okay, then we can we can set something up. We can we can take you. We can. I don't know. We can take you to Phagos as if we've as if we've captured you. And and then and then and then we can spring a trap and we can between all of us I'm sure we can take him. Does Fagos know that I'm here? Yeah, he's the one that told us that you were coming. He uh, <laughs> Mon says, he um he patrols the skies a bit further up than you can than, than people tend to look. But he's got excellent eyes. He's like a hawk. Stays in the trees if he's going to get spotted. Uh, 
flies above, sees if somebody's coming. If they feel if they if they seem like the sort of thing he can take on his own, he'll take them. But if they if they've got kitted out with weapons and things like you were, then they'll 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 usually let us at least take their weapons first, send them on their way, and then he'll spring his little trap. So how long have we got before he comes looking? Uh, we're not sure really. Like, he'll come back. He'll he'll come around every couple of hours. He makes sure to not make a routine of it, so that we. Um, he doesn't make a routine of it, so that we can't ever uh, feel comfortable. I suppose. Um, at this point, she starts to. <coughs> it's all right. Just give it time, love. Um, <laughs> Mon sort of sits down on the back haunches of the uh, the horse, which is just starting to kind of like come to now. It was, um, so where'd you learn to fight like this anyway, love? We're in like three hours from town. Uh, maybe three or four, yeah. Uh, Apis at this point gets up and starts to wander over to see if they have any uh, health potions on the rogue. We head on over there, doing a wee investigation. Let's do an investigation check. Uh, nine? Ugh, nine's not the greatest. What's our investigation modifier? Uh, plus three, not too bad then, 12. Uh, so with the 12 investigation, we quite quickly find that they have a, bow, uh, a short bow and a uh, quiver of arrows. Shot bow and a quiver of arrows. They seem like they're normal bows, uh, much worse than much worse condition than our longbow is, um, and so definitely not an improvement. But we can restock on our ar arrows. Make sure that we've uh, got enough arrows. So let me head on over to the main page and take this thirteen up to a uh, up to a twenty or so. Where are my arrows? So we take some of take some of their arrows. Make sure that we've got enough. Um, we then check for their coin purse. Uh, their coin purse does uh, does happen to be on the hip, nice and easy, and they ha and they happen to have. Oh, that's right. I don't have a D twelve for them. Uh, they happen to have eight silver pieces and four copper pieces, and then oh, four gold pieces. Nice and oops, I just rolled that. Off without the uh, without the dice cam. Oh well. Uh, eight silver, uh, four copper, and four gold. Um, I'm going to add that to our our gold because I think Apis would take it. Would they not? Please, uh, please speak up if you feel like Apis would not take the the golden things from them. But being that they just got attacked by this dude, I feel like Apis would feel like they were entitled to taking taking the money. Um, the cloak we check, and it is just a regular looking traveler's cloak, just a nice dark cloak that's uh, fairly, fairly well looked after. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of patches to it or anything. 17, and what was it? Four copper. There we go. They have no friends and are apparently a psychopath, so yeah, I'll take the gold. <laughs> it's not like the rogue needs it anymore. Um, the other two just watch as we take the gold and don't don't say anything in um, in um, opposition to it. We check out uh, the rest of their body. Nothing, nothing worth taking. No vials of potion. Nothing like that, and uh, as we're as as it becomes more clear that we're like investigating them for stuff to loot, um, Mon says <laughs> he wouldn't let he wouldn't let us keep anything that was useful, not more than uh, needed for an ambush. I'm surprised he actually managed to uh, take any of the gold with him. It was gold, right? <laughs> he is wearing uh, leather armor, yes. Um, so. The option, the option is open to us as the uh, as the horse comes back to consciousness and stands up again uh, on one hit point and starts to sort of like walk walk over here shakily. Uh, oops, on the battle map again. 
Um, the horse comes to consciousness, starts to walk over shakily to to this little patch here, and just starts to eat some grass. The ho the uh, option is open to us what to do now. What's in the cart back there? And uh, Mon says, "Ah, oh, nothing. It's all just fake stuff. It's all just empty boxes, mostly empty boxes and cloths." It used it was an actual supplies cart, like a uh, couple of a couple of days before I was uh, I joined the joined the team. Um, they managed to take out a supplies cart. Uh, Phagos ate the horse and left the cart there as a good little uh, ambush tactic. We were getting pretty good at it as well. Last one we last one we got was uh, my lady here and uh, points to Felicity. She uh, she she only survived because uh, she proved to be pretty handy with the arcane stuff. She gave gave him a, a wand of some kind that she was holding onto as well. So uh, he let her live for that. So what's the option, everybody? Um, We've got uh, we've got short rest time if we want to take a short rest to take some hit points back. Uh, we've got pursue, uh, continue pushing on towards the town that we were going towards and hope that we can get there before the Manticore comes for us, or we can have some sort of an ambush situation where we where we set up some kind of a trap to try and kill the Manticore. Manticore is definitely an abomination or a monstrosity. It's not an, not an animal. That's correct. What happens to you if you come back without me? <laughs> uh, if we came back without you or your things, and all of us were alive, we wouldn't be able to say that you'd gotten away. If we came back without you or your things, and we and we claimed that in the fight, you wouldn't give up your stuff, but you killed Thunderbolt, then I mean, and he turns to Oliver for kind of like a confirmation, and Oliver says he'd never buy it. He'd never buy it. Thunderbolts, Thunderbolts hidden in the trees for the most part. He never, he never starts the fight. If anybody was going to go down in a fight, it'd be, it would be one of you guys, or me. If we came back without Thunderbolt, he'd know that we turned on him. I'm sure. Is there some way to see if that we can like have a? A little sit down and catch a catch our breath and tend to some of these wounds. And Monsters sort of kind of gestures around and says, "Like, I guess he's as good a place as any." So, did you see the Mantico has access to a wand of something? Uh, yeah. What what was the one? She's <laughs> she can't speak. I guess we can ask her in a bit. When does this wear off? I don't know. Primeval awareness. We could primeval awareness. We are technically in a wooded area, so we could extend it to the outskirts of the wood. How many hit dice do we have now? How have we long rested enough times to get them all back? Yes, we have. Yet yeah. we had a we had a level up to level four, and it took like four days. So we've definitely got all of our hit dice back. If you push towards town, newbie, then there's a good chance that the Manticore will come looking before then, because the the Manticore knew that you were on the on the road, set these guys up for the ambush, and now the Manticore is waiting for the spoils of that ambush. And it's about three to four hours uh, between here and Fondurg. No caves? Are there any caves on the way? I'm afraid not. No. Uh, if there was, probably be a better part for a um, an ambush. As it was, we just had to set up in the middle of the path. Healing spell might be more valuable than primeval awareness. Yeah, that's a good point. Can we use the trees as cover to get to the town without the Manticore seeing us? Uh, we propose that to them, and Oliver says, uh, "No, he he knows he knows these trees. He's we can use the trees as cover when fighting him, but um, not for not for getting away. He will he will be able to find us." When do you have to be back before he'll get suspicious? Well, I mean, by now he'll probably expect that the ambush has happened. It could be that we, one of us, got seriously hurt in the fight, and Mon <laughs> gestures and sort of uh, looks down at the wounds that have, he's sustained in the fight. It, it could be that we're taking time to rest up before bringing the stuff to him. But either 
we come with you and your stuff, or we come with just your stuff and you got away in the fight. But if you got away in the fight, then he would have seen you running that way, I imagine. He's between here and Fondurg. Is there any way we can refresh our spell slots? No, we uh, refresh our spell slots on a, sh on a long rest, unfortunately. That's like an eight hour rest. How do we feel about two short rests, 30 minutes each until the paralysis wears off? Yeah, we could do that. We could go back to back, two short rests, rest for an hour. The paralysis on her will wear off. We get to roll two hit dice um, and we get back anything that comes back on a short rest, which for us, I don't think is anything actually. I've got no idea what a man manticore can do. Um, we say, can we, t actually, I'm going to roll a, a check of some kind for Apis on Apis's behalf. I'm going to make a, um, make a nature check or a history check to see if, if they have heard of manticores, see if they've heard anything about them. Oh, 15, 15 plus three, 18. So Apis has heard of manticores. Apis has heard, uh, horror stories of them and how they are just like a vicious, uh, predatorial, um, uh, hunter out in the, out in the wilderness. They are found in mountains, they're found in hills, they're found in plains, grasses, they're found all over the place. They're an abomination, uh, the exact history of them, like the origin of them is unknown to Apis, but what they would know is that they are part lion, part like, uh, body of a lion essentially, with the tail of like a scorpion but with multiple spikes on it, multiple spines. Apis would know that the, uh, the head of them is like humanoid and they have multiple rows of sheet teeth like a shark. They are uh, malicious, uh, malevolent, vicious, violent, horrible, uh, bloodthirsty creatures. They would also, the, uh, Apis would also know with an 18, that was a pretty good roll. Apis would also know that they are, uh, they specifically like the taste of humanoid flesh. So they, uh, in, in particular humans, they really like humans. Um, and they are known to eat minerals as well. They're known to eat, um, <clears throat> they're no, known to eat rocks and metals too. Um, with that, the with an 18, the last thing you would probably know about them is that they can fling their tail spikes uh, um, as, as projectile weapons. And that's about everything that you know about them. And they can fly. I think I mentioned that already. Ajo's idea. We could short rest, use our rope to pretend to be restrained in case he comes over. Awesome. That is a good idea. Who's in favor of Apis's, uh, Apis's, Ajo's idea to uh, restrain yourself with the rope, restrain yourself with your rope, uh, while you have a short rest, in case he comes flying, looking, looking round for you and stuff. Put a yes in the in the chat if you are okay with that idea, and put a no if you want to do something else instead. I don't like the restraining part. You wouldn't actually be restrained, board boring. It's your rope that you control. It just restrains, so you would have yourself wrapped up as if you were restrained, and then with a single word, you can drop the rope. You use a, <clears throat> is it a bonus action for those ropes? I think it's a bonus action to use it. So you'd just be able to use a bonus action to drop the, the to drop the rope. You can blame the paralysis for the delay if, the, if he shows up, that's a good point as well. Warm rope hug, <laughs> that's what it is. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. So we, um, we use the um, we use the rope. We wrap ourselves in it. Um, we we give the the command word to entangle, and it it wraps us up. And then we give the command word to loosen, <laughs> and it loosens up a little bit. We're not actually that restrained, but we look like we're restrained. Uh, we tell Mel to do what? Go and like hide out in one of the trees and and act as a lookout for us. As a buzzy bee, she could she could easily not be. Um, uh, a threat or prey towards the manticore and so she could she could see it coming and and warn us I guess um, We wrap ourselves up uh, sort of sit down by the roots of this tree here um, Morn meanwhile will uh, uh, What can he do for this short rest he can go and tend to the horse I think because that he's a farrier and he's good with horses uh, and Oliver will tend to the lady here so this is the sort of layout that we're in. You just leave the uh, Thunderbolt's dead body around the place. <clears throat> and then we're having a short rest. We tell, we tell in that time, we've obviously told uh, Mel what the plan is. The plan is that um, we're gonna short rest here. 
if if the manticore comes looking, then we'll attack it uh, after it after it comes down to eat Apis, I guess. Um, otherwise, we'll we'll come up with a new plan after the short rest. Does the manticore know about Mel? Has he seen her? Does the manticore know about uh, my bee companion? And uh, Oliver says, I I don't know if he does. He didn't say. He didn't say that uh, uh, you were coming with someone. He just said that there's a, a dwarf lady on the way with um, with a horse, and we could take the uh, take the horse and the and the and the weapons that you, she had. Uh, to, at which point, Apis says, "Oh, I'm I I'm not actually a lady. Um, just and he goes, "Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I thought with the lack of the beard. Uh, uh, sorry, I I've never seen a horse with a without uh, sorry a dwarf without a, a beard like that. You see, it's it's fine. I'm actually not." A bloke either in that sense I'm kind of just I'm just them and they I'm 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 Apis and he goes oh <laughs> sorry Apis um uh, uh, Oliver by the way uh that's Morn this is Felicity and we never actually knew his real name he just called himself Thunderbolt he thought it sounded edgy and exciting can we do an insight check what are you insight checking Minotaur seeing if they've been telling you the truth the whole time let's find out That is a 10, 10 plus our modifier of insight. Insight, I don't believe we are proficient in. It is a plus two, so 12 total insight. With a 12, that we don't pick up on any, any reason to doubt them. They could be profi proficient in lying to us, but um, we have no reason to doubt right now. Mel needs to drop something or break a branch to signal, not come bu buzzing our yell at us. Well, remember uh, from way back when we were on the farm with Mel, uh, we spent some of our downtime coming up with like a, a a version of thieves camp with her, where she can like signal to us uh, almost like one of those people on an airplane uh, on an airport um, runway. She's she's got like a series of signals that she can do with her wings and legs uh, that can that we can refer back to, and I believe we got a nat twenty on our animal handling uh, insight checks with when we were practicing that so we're pretty good with the um, semaphore thanks i knew there was a word for it so she'll do some of those signals we're, we're sort of sitting down keeping an eye on mel and she'll give us some of these semaphore signals uh, to let us know when the manticore's on the way so we are all set for a short rest so i assume that we are going to have uh, we're going to expend one of our hit dice on this first long rest this first short rest sorry uh for anyone who is new to the twitch tales or my dnd in in general uh, a house rule that I use is that you can expend only one hit dice per shot rest, but to counter that, uh, shot rests are only half an hour rather than an hour. So we're going to use our uh, hit dice. Please put a thumbs down right now if you don't want to do that, but I assume that we do because we are wounded and we're about to fight a manticore potentially. So probably we're going to want all the hit points that we can get. All right. <clears throat> Apis, as a ranger, has a d10 hit dice, which is this one here. Let me put the dice come on so you know that I'm not uh, lying about it. This is d a d10. The zero counts as a 10. Uh, they get to roll a d10 plus their constitution modifier. Whoa, look at that. Five. Five plus their con mod. Con mod is a two. Uh, so they get seven hit points back. So seven hit points back from the first half hour of resting uh, takes us up to 24. 24 of 45 is above uh, above half, so we are no longer wounded, but we are still pretty much half health. In the meantime, what's his chops? Morn, he is also going to roll a hit dice. Uh, he is currently on that. He's going to oh 10, nice. Uh, 10 plus his constitution, which for him is, let me have a look at his, 3. So he gets 13 hit points back, which takes him up to almost full, actually. Yeah, he's, he's now uh, suffered only 3 damage. Um, Felicity is conscious, but uh, she's on 1 hit point, and she's going to get uh, her hit points back, which is... Uh, four, four plus two, she gets six hit points back. So she is on seven hit points left. She's taken nine points of damage. Uh, she is still wounded. She's still below half health, but she's no longer unconscious. 
She's still paralyzed at this point because it's only been half an hour since she woke. Um, Oliver actually took no damage in that fight, as far as I'm aware, as far as I remember anyway. I don't have it written down anywhere, so I'm pretty sure Oliver took no damage. Uh, the horse. The horse also gets to uh, roll a hit dice. What, what's the hit dice of a horse? Is it a d10? Squishy casters are squishy. Yep. 2d10. Thank you, Asmiel. All right, so the horse is going to use one of its hit dice. Uh, roll a d10. Not got the dice. Come on. Oops. Boo. Oh, two. Is it just 2d10, not 2d10 plus anything? Uh, they usually have 2d10 plus two, so they have a plus one to that. So uh, it was, uh, had taken 12 points of damage. Had taken 12, because it was on one hit point left. Uh, just recovered three, so it's now taken nine points of damage. Nine of 13. And is currently still wounded. So that's the first half hour. The Manticore does not fly by after, after about a half an hour's up. We've caught our breath. We've regained some health. Uh, we can start to uh, have. We can have another. We can have another um, short rest now and hope for the best. At the end of this second short rest, the uh, the lady should hopefully have come back to consciousness again. Uh, well, not consciousness, but she should no longer be paralyzed. Um, and we can all roll another hit dice if possible. Yes, if you want another short rest. No, if you don't. The longer you leave it, I already have in mind how long it's going to be before this manticore comes looking. The, lo the longer you leave it, the more chance that the manticore comes to you and you don't get your to set up your ambush. But the longer you leave it, the more, more health you have back. We ask them how the manticore likes to fight. Yeah, okay. So while we're uh, while we're resting, which everybody is almost unanimous about, it seems. Um, while we're having our second long rest, we talk to them. Can you tell us anything about like his tactics and things? How does this how does this Fagos like to uh, like to fight? Um, he likes to fight from above at first. He's got um, he's got tail spikes that he f flings at you. Uh, he'll use those to sort of manipulate you as you're trying to run away. He'll fire them to sh to sort of warn, hey, you can't run from me, and that's how I that's how he got me to stick around. Um, I think if we can if we can stay in the trees, <clears throat> if we can stay in the in in the woods, then he's got a harder time hitting us with those tail spikes, and so he's forced to get closer to us and closer to the ground. If we're out on the path, there's no chance he'll stay in the air and he'll just fire uh, tail spikes at us and it'll hurt. It'll just take us down. Um, if he realizes that all of us are working against him, then he'll he'll have to uh, he'll have to split his um, his 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 attacks between all of us he is smart enough to to know when he's losing the fight and he might flee but I've never seen him lose a fight so I don't know how he acts when if and when he starts to actually lose a fight he might flee or he might fight to the end because of his pride he is a very proud creature 18 wasn't enough to know if they have any weaknesses now all right so we have a uh, we have to come up with a more uh, a more concrete plan now. What is if if the Manticore does come during this second half hour of resting, before we finished our sh second short rest? What's that? What what is our plan? Are we is the plan to pretend like these guys have uh, captured you, but left you with all of your things? Like you're tied up, but you've still got your bag, you've still got your bow, and all of that. Like is that, is that the idea, or are they going to take your bows off of you so that it looks more like you actually have no weapons? How many spell slots has the lady got left? Uh, well, as an uh, as a wizard, she has just done arcane recovery and recovered one of them, um, but she only has that one spell slot left. Run screaming. That's always my plan. <laughs> we have a magical rope. <clears throat> we've got a net, yeah, we've got some caltrops. We could make some sort of traps with those if we can think of some creative way to do so. Can we rig up the dead rogue with explosives? <laughs> we don't have explosives, Cinderfinger. They might be lazy and get us to carry our own stuff back into the place, since we're all restrained with the rope. We can't actually use the bow to fire, so yeah, that makes sense. Take the rogue's bow so they have a bow to present to them as if it's as if it's ours. That could be pretty smart, mythical. 
we should still have our weapons on us. It'll be so keeping our weapons on us is obviously better for us than attacking uh, the Manticore, but it's more suspicious to the Manticore that like why have you not taken this dwarf's weapons off of them? Nobody said they were competent. <laughs> fire ready for the fire arrows. That's a good. That's a good thing to prepare. Prepare uh, PsyQ, Yeah, if we had a torch stuck into the ground and lit, we can use our fire arrows that we have. Remember, we've got four fire arrows. They captured lay. They they captured lay weapons next to us, but put our robe of something over it as a ghillie cover. That's a, that's pretty smart, PsyQ. Yeah, it's a pretty smart plan. Is there a way we can utilize the proximity of being captured and then use the net to snare it? Would the manticore eat the dead rogue? Can we use him as bait? Would um would Fergos eat a thunderbolt like that? And he says, I, I don't know. He, yeah, probably. I don't think he lets food go to waste in that sense. And he does like he does have a a taste for human flesh. Um, so I imagine he probably would, if if nothing else other than an intimidation technique to to keep us in line. It, I must tell you, it's not a pleasant sight. But at least this time he won't be screaming. Put our things besides us, far enough away that we couldn't reach them if we were restrained, but close enough that we can easily get to them because we're not. That's a good. That's a good idea, Sparrow. All right. So what we'll what we'll do? A few of the a few of you are in um, a bit of agreement there. Um, we we say the command word, drop the the rope off of us, take off take off our um, our our cloak of um, uh, fashions, the one that can change. We can change it into looking looking like whatever we want it to look like. Uh, we well before we take it off, we turn it into um, looking like a a sort of a grassy undergrowth. Kind of we look down at the ground next to us and we make a similar sort of camouflage appearance to it with grass and 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 different te textures and and, uh, and and shading. And we take it off um, and we lay down our longbow. Uh, we can keep our quiver because that's not a threat. Like it's it's a bit of a hassle for them to have taken your quiver off you. Uh, but we lay down our longbow and a long sword underneath this um, underneath this cloak, which we then put down next to us, and it's close enough that we can grab it if we're not restrained. And then we grab the rope and re-restrain re ourselves with it. We tell the others that that's that's what our plan was. So now we've got access to our uh, our bow and arrow, uh, our bow and our um, long sword, but we just don't have it on us right now. It might be harder to the, for the manticore to hit us with spikes if we start a forest fire. <laughs> uh, it probably would be, yes, but you're also starting a forest fire at that point. For a flying enemy, Caltrops will be useless. Throwing it at him will do minimal damage. Yeah, the Caltrops isn't going to be a very good trap, I don't think. We should have a torch ready, should we? Um, Mel, should Mel roll a hit dice as well? Yeah, Mel, Mel's got enough hit dice to spend. She can uh, always use one for free. That's a d8 for Mel. Uh, Mel's only got two hit points missing and her con is one so she can't possibly roll anything less than yeah so Mel's back up to full all right and then we start a uh, we start uh, our second uh, our second rest at this point I'm gonna roll uh, another hit dice for Apis because we want to be as many hit points as we can before we attack a manticore three Ugh. three plus two for con is five we get five hit points back and we've used two of our four hit dice. Uh, five takes us to 29. We're at 29 of 45 hit points by the end of the hour. Uh, the lady is going to roll a d6 for her health. Uh, what has she got? Ugh! A one! A one plus her con mod of two. She gets three hit points back. So the lady is now has now taken only six points of damage which actually means that she's no longer bloodied at the end of that hour as well she starts to the poison starts to wear off of her system and she starts to move around a little bit better uh, and the horse what's the horse got the horse has got a three three plus one for the horse so the horse regains four hit points instead of taking nine it's now taken five damage uh, five damage for the horse. Horse has got 13, so that is no longer wounded either. Thank you. 
Oh, and then Morn as well. How much damage has he taken? He's taken three. Is he going to use his last hit dice? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Uh, eight. <laughs> the only guy who could have done with rolling a one. Uh, he's going to regain that, so he's got no damage to him. So Oliver and Morn are tip-top shape. Um, the wizard is still take what nine? I didn't say. Why does it not accept it? Bloody roll twenty. The wizard's taken only six damage, which is not good for her. Um, she's only got sixteen. Uh, the horse has taken five damage, which means it's still got like eight hit points left. But Melby is back up to full. We're on twenty-nine of forty-five. All right. At the end of that half hour, the manticore has still not turned up. We've been looking out for it, we've been listening out for it, but it hasn't come. Even though it warned these guys that you were coming down the path and you needed to be ambushed um, over an hour ago now, it hasn't come looking to see why they haven't delivered you yet. What do you guys want to do? So we ask, um, where's this um, Fergus' uh, nest, by the way? And Oliver says he keeps it. He keeps it somewhat uh, secret from us, but we're pretty sure it's about half an hour's walk from here uh, to the north. Uh, maybe about twenty minutes on the road, but we usually go by the trees, um, and it must be somewhere within within walking range from there. That's where he meets us. There's a, a clearing he usually meets us in. What do we what do we want to do, guys? We've got we've had a, a long a short rest for an hour now. Your uh, wizard lady is back. As soon as she comes back to uh, consciousness, she says, oh, "That is not a pleasant experience. What is that that you injected me with?" She says up to the trees, and uh, you say, <laughs> "Bee venom, I suppose." <laughs> uh, thanks for being the guinea pig for it. I don't think I've. Um, I've seen it act all the way from injecting all the way to uh, finishing somebody off like that and then them getting better from it. So it's been good experience for me to sit here and watch. <laughs> she says, yeah, I bet it has. Oh, my muscles are on fire. And she like, does a bit of stretching. She starts doing a bit of yoga. yoga. Uh, stretching out her back. All of her muscles that have been tensed up through this bee venom for the last hour. <clears throat> right, so we're pretty set on this plan, are we? We're going to try and kill Phagos. Because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty tired, I'm going to say. I, I've, I've not got a lot of juice left in me. I can, I can still do this. And she just <laughs> sends off a ray of frost <laughs> up into the trees. She hits one of the branches and it <laughs> frosts over. And then Im almost immediately like thaws out and starts to drip to the floor. Uh, I can also still do this, and she, she conjures a minor illusion of a, a, a little, um, um, an acorn, uh, and then she whoosh, manipulates it and it grows into a, a pine cone, and then whoosh, she changes it and it turns into like an ice cream, and then she turns it again whoosh, into like a, uh, um, a mouse, which just sort of sits there stationary in her hand, and then it goes, <laughs> and it sort of like PNGs forwards but it's making the noise of a mouse, but it's not moving like a mouse. And then she drops it on the ground and it poof, puffs out into a puff of smoke and sparkles. I got simple things I can do still. Uh, not a lot I can do with that. Um, but I can still, I think I, sh I think I might have one more missiles in me. Is she sending signals to the Manticore or just showing off? Uh, let's make an insight check and find out. Hmm. Apis sort of looks around, suspicious, slow to trust. Two! Two plus two insight? We have no idea. She could be giving signals, but we're if she is, we can't read them. And we look around and we can't see a manticore or anyone that would that would be um that would be giving the manticore sig the signals that she's giving them. So no idea. No way of knowing. Okay, battle plan. They bring us in as a prisoner. She freeze dries him. We all attack him. We win. <laughs> that's, that's the that's the plan. Um, what's what was the wand that you handed over? And she says, "Oh, it, it was a wand of uh, wand of web. Um, it's a it's a web. It's a wand that can 
be used to create a web uh, a webbing area in a certain area a certain region that will slow down creatures in the in the area unless they're spiders of course do you think he's using it and she la- la- <laughs> he, no he's he's uh, he's not the sort that to actually use the items that he collects he just collects useful items and uses them as as bargaining tools or chips or sometimes he says that he might hand it back to me if I do a good enough job I think he's just keeping it just because it's magical and what's your story how did you come to be here he says um my story I'm I'm I I'm working for the um, Arcanist's Entente I was coming to Log Shadridge on the map and uh, it's a an opening town now we don't have any um we don't have any faction out in the uh, out in Shadridge, so I was coming to log it and just start taking notes, essentially, for the Arcanists. Um, I was about it was about a week ago. It was just after no, maybe about four five days ago now um, when I was ambushed. We're in a forest. Difficult terrain shouldn't slow us down. Yeah, that's a good point. We are a ranger with forest favored terrain, so we shouldn't should be okay with difficult terrain. Collect useful items. I want his hoard. <laughs> Aunt Manticore is considered lazy predators, so we could lure them out and span spider wand trap trap him. If we had the spider wand, but he has it. Do you think it'll be easier to attack him out here or at his home, like the clearing? They all kind of look at each other, and uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I think. He, I think if we have the element of surprise, that will give us the advantage. So I think by taking you to his home, we might, we might, we might be in better standing there. Arcanists entente, one word, with an e on the end. Can we tell if she's telling the truth about her history? We can certainly roll an in- insight check and find out. See if we know anything. What's that? A 12. A 12! 12 plus 2. 14. We have no reason to doubt her at this stage. Is there any possibility that we can get your items back before we attack him? Um, and Oliver says, I, I doubt it. Um, we don't exactly know where he keeps them. And... Even if we found that, there's a chance that he's still sitting on it or sitting at home with it. Um, we can certainly try, of course, but I, I, I don't. I think we, I think we will lose the element of surprise if we go looking for his lair, rather than looking for him. He might find, he might see that we are looking for him and real and work out that you're not actually our prisoner. I'll need to make a bomb drop like attack from above on him just falling without using her wings <laughs> yeah fly real high above and then just zip, wings in st- stinger out we need to get him on the ground and keep him there somewhere that that's, that way we'll be more effective in combat uh, yeah agreed says mon if we do leave to go to his place we might have the element of surprise but i can't have my weapons close at hand can i and mon says well i mean i don't see why not like i can be leading you in your rope and I'll have my hand on your back and I'll just be holding your weapons and then when the fight breaks out I hand you the weapons or you take them from me how do you go about giving him loot and prisoners and things um after an ambush we usually take the take the prisoners and the loot to the um well in situations like this he usually asks that we take the loot and let the prisoner go free and then further down the line, when the prisoner feels like they've gotten away scot-free with their life, they encounter a manticore that chases them down and enjoys the hunt and dies. That's probably what would have happened to you. Um, but in situations where we do take prisoners, we uh, will usually take it to the clearing that we where we see him and, and we'll call out for him and he'll come. Uh, so he's obviously within earshot of that clearing. If we offer to work for him by some time... Potentially, yeah, that's an option to keep in mind. So if you take me back like this, 
you'll wonder why he'll wonder why he, uh, you didn't set me free. And uh, and Oliver says, no, I've thought about that, and I think we can play, we can easily play it that you were willing to die for your things, and so you weren't willing to part with them, and so even if we'd taken you, even if we'd forcibly overpowered you, taken your things from you, every time we tried to let you free you would just attack us again with open fists and try and get your things back. And so we had no choice but to take you to him like this instead. I, I feel like he will buy that. Um, Felicity at this point chimes in. Is it weird that he hasn't come looking for us? Uh, is it weird that he hasn't come looking for us? And Olive says, I have been wondering that, yes. I, I think we might be running out of time. If we either have to go now and Clearly, we all need to look like we're a lot hurt, a lot more hurt than we are. We need to be exhausted and and limping, and show signs of why we haven't come for him earlier than this. Show him visibly if he's watching us. Show him that we we've come a, a, as quickly as we can. Could we pretend that the knights know about him and Apis is the advance scout? Could we could we pretend perhaps? That we that the knights are already aware of his existence, and that I've been sent on behalf of the knights to, and Oliver says I I he doesn't he doesn't respect authority he he sees it as a challenge and a and a. He's arrogant and proud and enjoys the thrill of a hunt, and the thrill of taking down people who have been sent to kill him. Um, trust me, I I. I thought the same sort of thing when Jonathan uh, chose the way that he chose and was eaten for it. I don't think it would work that way. Well, we can certainly look bloodied, we say, pointing at Thunderbolt's blood that's an hour old now and seeping out. Still, still, He stopped seeping out of his head and has now just pulled into the dirt and mud around him. We can always look bloody. Mel has been keeping an eye out, yep. So I think people are saying we should get going. So we uh, are mostly in a in agreement. Get uh, starting starting heading for the um, the location, the meetup location. Is that correct? What about if we feign recruitment for him? If we if if given the choice, he says that we can fight. He says that's definitely an option. He would he he doesn't want an overly large team. But my only concern. No, actually, that's that could work because with lo losing Thunderbolt, we could do with someone who has clearly got um, a skill with a bow like you have. So I think he might actually take it. Any time that we have taken more than four into the group in the past, he has usually let one of us go. Can you describe the meeting place? Uh, it's a forest area a lot like this, only just a couple less trees. Um, it's not much of a clearing, but it's 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 a, an area where the um, where the trees are slightly less abundant. And that's all. If we fight in a clearing, he has the advantage. There are in, I I know, but it, it, if we are to the sides of the clearing, if we can still be in tree line, we can still be back in the trees. And if he, if he tries to stay in the clearing, then we'll get clear shots at him without him getting clear shots back at us. That's my thinking. If we stay, the manticore will come looking suspiciously and he'll be prepared. If he can start munching on the rogue, he might be distracted. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe. He has freedom of movement outside of the trees, right? He can fly. Yes, he can, he can fly very agilely. Um, if he's outside of the tree line, he can... He can f fly where he wants, but if he's down under the tree line, he has cover of trees. So it, it really is, depending on how we're fighting, I'd much prefer to fight with this. And he um, pats his crossbow. And getting a clean shot at him in the sky is probably easier for me than getting him in the tree line where he can hide behind trees and things. All right, let's put it to a pole. With seventy-seven percent of the vote, we're going to take the fight to him. We're going to uh, we're going to not stay where we are. We're going to take we're going to take it to the clearing. Call out for the Manticore. 
try and put some sort of facade forwards that we have put up a good fight, we've wounded all these guys. That's why they had to take a short rest before bringing us. Uh, we're going to um, we're going to have the Manticore come down and like try and eat us, but then before it gets a chance, bam, drop the rope, grab the bow, shoot him, everybody attacks and hope for the best. That's the general plan. We're not going to leave the horse to get eaten. Uh, we're not going to leave it here in the clearing, so we're either going to take it with us and and tie it up somewhere, or we're going to um, or we're going to take it all the way to the clearing and hope that it just stays out of the fight. So what's the um, what do you guys what do you guys plan for the horse? What do you what do you think we should should do with the horse as we start to get ready? These guys start to uh, to grab their stuff. Uh, they. Um, What's his chops? Uh, Mon grabs grabs Mr. Ed and brings him over and says, um, "What should we do with the the horse? <laughs> Put it in your horse pocket. <laughs> Can we throw the dead rogue on the horse for food? Yep, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Actually, we lob lob uh, thunderbolt over the back of Mr. Ed. Can we make our cloak longer and have more folds to hide our weapons on us? Hmm, maybe." It can be made longer, to an to a degree. Um, it can't be made to just have pockets. So, like folding it up, folding it up in ways. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose it could be made to look like it's got folds and things. It's got it's like it's designed to have um, ripples. And if it's got wavy sort of fabric, and then we can hold our sh stuff on us. Hiding our hiding our weapons is going to be tricky and risky. If the Manticore sees for a moment that we still have weapons on us, then they'll probably know what's going on. So I think I think ha uh, Mon's idea of having him like leading us, hand on our back, pushing us in as if he's like, "Hey, we've got you a, a treat, boss." And then, like, instantly, psh, as soon as you drop the rope, he hands you the bow. He'll basically have the readied action to hand you the bow as soon as you've as soon as you've dropped the rope. If the manticore tries to flee when getting too hurt for its taste, we can ask Mel to follow it discreetly. If the manticore goes back to its lair, we would know where it is and can surprise it there later and corner it, get back those people's stuff and all the deliveries that were lost. Or we corner it and set, set its lair on fire. That is also smart as well. He holds our bow and maybe our sword too, so we don't seem too sus. Yeah, I think that's probably the better idea. So we'll do that. We get we uh, we start setting off. Um, what do you what do you reckon we're going to tell Mel to do? How what's our what's our plan as Mel comes with us? As we set off through the through the forest towards the lair that we're going towards. Is Mel gonna? be too much of a noisy distraction if she comes with us is she going to like take to the skies and and fly slightly above us out of ears ears reach mel is not going to let us go alone no mel would mel would stick with us but like within 50 feet or so from a dnd &D noob would that rope be able to immobilize the manticore yes it would yeah let me let me read you the limitations of the. Um, let me read you the limitations uh, by going into magic items and showing you this on screen here. It is a rare, wondrous item. It's thirty feet long. For us, I think it's fifty, sixty. I think I think it's a sixty-foot rope. Weighs three pounds. If you hold one end of the rope and use an action to speak its command word, the other end darts forward to entangle a creature. So you can see within twenty feet of you. So it's an action to make it entangle somebody. The target must succeed on a DC 15 uh, dexterity saving throw or become restrained. And we decided that it had a limitation of large. It can only it can only um, restrain anything up to a large creature. Anything huge or gargantuan is unlikely to succeed. You can release the creature by using a bonus action to speak a command word, which is what we're going to do when we when we're in this situation when we actually want to drop it and, and trigger the attack. We're going to use a bonus action to speak a second command word uh, to get out of it, essentially. And the rope has hit points and blah blah blah. Yeah, she's just a, a, a random bee in a in a in an, in the area. 
Can Mel talk to insects in the forest without using her spell thingy? Uh, yeah, she can. She can interact with insects in the forest. Yeah. When she's flying, she's much faster than us. She's got a fifty-foot fly speed, um, Mel. But when she's walking, she's only got a ten-foot walk speed. So Mel is a little ambler on the ground, not able to keep up with us even slightly. Um, but when she's uh, up in the air, she can zoom around like a like a speeding bullet. So I reckon Mel would probably take to the tree, like above the tree line, and just kind of zigzag back and forth because she, uh, like she's just a bee looking for honey and stuff, and then dips down into the trees and like she's just pretending like she's just a regular bee in the forest, a regular giant bee. Do we know how fast he is? Uh, they haven't given any sort of D and D specifics. No, they they've, they've just said that he's a, he's an agile flyer. Burrito Mel and have crossbow dude carry her, as if they've like captured her as well. Who's in favour of letting Mel just fly unhindered as if she's not with us? And who's in favour of Mel being restrained um, and, and presented as well, as if she is actually with us? Start putting them in the chat and I can see whether we, we need a vote or not, if it's uh, a, bit, a bit even. Put a, put a yes... Uh, up, up arrow, yes, if you want her to just be free. Put a no if you want her to be restrained. The thing about that, Spates, is that insects would only have an insect brain and they wouldn't be able to give very good information. We can certainly try it, but the chances of them giving any sort of useful information is very limited. Oh, disguise her as a bedroll. <laughs> I see. All right, I think we're just going to let her uh, roam free. We're just going to let her roam th free, just pretend like she's a bee. We tell Mel this as the plan. Hey, Mel, uh, what the plan is is that you're going to just pretend like you're not even with me. You're just, you're just a giant bee that happens to be in the area. Just buzz around. Don't stray too far from us, but like back and forth over the treetops, dip down, look for food, whatever. Keep yourself out of harm's way in case he comes for you. Um, if he does come for you, then straight back here and we'll protect you. Uh, that's the general gist. Um, keep an eye out uh, for like if you can see him, if you can see his lair, anything like that. If if we start to come up on it, just be aware. Um, but just try and try and make it clear that you're not with us you're just kind of happening to go in the same direction she goes yeah yes i i i, I think i understand Apis. thank you uh i will do so now and then i get away from you guys up into the trees and she starts to dart back and forth just like a bee looking for food beat em. all right so uh with that in place we start to wander on that way uh mon is going to uh, Morn is going to be pushing us through the forest ahead of him. Um, Oliver is kind of the leader of the group he's going to be leading. And um, uh, Felicity is going to be uh, bringing along Ed on the horse with the dead guy attached to it. Uh, we continue on for about 20 minutes or so before Oliver says, um, we're getting we're getting close now. Uh, make sure that, make sure that uh, that bastard's properly tied up, Mon. We don't want we don't want to uh, risk any sort of any sort of uh, escape here. Especially not because he's going to be angry anyway, given that we've lost Thunderbolt. <coughs> and then as we as we ra round sort of the next uh, couple of trees, you see that they start to thin out just a little bit. And up ahead, <clears throat> there's a, a bit of a clearing with a, a log in it. And as they enter the clearing, Oliver shouts out, Fagos! Fagos! I'm sorry that we took so long, but uh, this one's very feisty. I don't know if you want to eat or to have him join us, but uh, this one's particularly feisty. Unfortunately, it has... Uh, we lost Thunderbolt. And as we enter the clearing, we are prepared for a fight. And as we as we sort of look around waiting, 
Mon has us over here, and uh, and um, Oliver kind of stands over here by the the log. Felicity, knowing that she is better at range, and doesn't want the horse to die, <laughs> has uh, has kept the ha ah, move. Thank you. Has kept the horse back over here between these trees, and sort of stands at the edge of the clearing. Um. Oliver stands up onto the log and uh, loads his, well, on the journey has loaded the crossbow and makes sure he's just kind of standing with it um, un unthreateningly by his hip, but ready to shoot if he needs to. You can see that he is nervous, like he is shaking and and looking across you can kind of see the bolt rattling in the, uh, the, the, the barrel of the, the crossbow. Uh, Mon, however, is confident. It, the, the hand on your shoulder is not moving at all. You sort of glance back and see that Felicity is also nervous. She's got a uh, ha uh, hand on the reins, which is kind of shaking a little. And she's looking around, and there is sweat uh, beading on her forehead. There's only a moment or two before you see uh, s swooping down you hear you hear it before you see it you see you hear some uh, some tree branches just sort of being brushed aside and as something sweeps through them from down this corner you see that swooping down through this trees is a gigantic lion like creature which lands here ready to fight so as we are standing there held tight in our rope as if we are uh, unarmed and defeated in, in, in an ambush. We have wrapped up our, ourselves in our rope, but secretly in our, one of our hands we are holding one of the uh, one end of our rope so that we can, as a bonus action, drop the, uh, the rope on ourselves. Mon is standing behind us with his battle axe on his hip and our longbow in his, uh, in his, in his other hand that he is not using to uh, push us with. He's ready to hand our longbow to us at the moment's notice, but at the, at the time being, at the very least, it looks like he's, uh, he's disarmed us. Our tentative ally over here, uh, Oliver, he's holding a loaded crossbow, but he's not yet po poking it out uh, towards the manticore, wanting to keep up the illusion that he is uh, working on the manticore's behalf. The manticore comes swooping down from the trees and boom lands with a heavy thud on the ground before us. It then grins a, an enormously wide smile that seems to go all the way back to its jaw and behind its, uh, its, its lips unfurling back you can see these sharp jagged teeth and as it opens its mouth to speak you see even more jagged teeth in rows behind it. About three or four rows of these teeth as it smiles to us this malevolent smile. Its, hot, its, its eyes seem to be uh, yellow tinted as though uh, those of a, a hawk or some kind of bird of prey as it looks first at Oliver and then across towards Morn and you and then back towards uh, Felicity and the horse. <laughs> well, you finally returned. Not a moment too soon, Oliver. I almost came looking for you. <laughs> you wouldn't want to keep me waiting, would you, Oliver? And Oliver, you can see, starts nervously shaking. It seems like the nerves are sufficiently accurate in how Oliver would be uh, acting normally anyway. You thought for a moment that his nervous hand would give him away that he is planning something. But it seems like, given the presence of this creep, creepy manticore, uh, Oliver would probably be this nervous anyway. <laughs> so what did you bring me? You normally let them loose. Oliver says, "Yeah, yeah um, he, they, they, um, they fought, they fought back. Of course they fought back. That's why I use you." And Mon says with a much more confident voice, "Fagos." Sir, this one, every time we let it loose, it would come back and fight even stronger, even with bare hands. We thought it might be a valuable men member of the team for its ferocity. Do we want to say anything? 
do we want to um, do we want to add to this this uh, deception at any at any point in any way, or are we just gonna stay stay quiet for now? Just look strong. We hear what they're saying about us, and we just we just look strong. We just like we just we just want out of this rope. Kind of like struggle a little bit against Mon's uh, hand. Stay still, stay quiet. Most people say and stay silent type for now. <sighs> Is that right? Tell me, what does it fight with? And Mon holds up your bow. Longbow. Is that right? Now tell me. <laughs> Takes the uh, skies a little, and then <laughs> boom, lands down heavy next to Felicity, who kind of jolts and he goes, what happened to the other one? And the tail comes round over the top of its wings and the spikes on its tail it doesn't seem to curl like a, a um, doesn't seem to curl like a, a prehensile tail but it uses the tail spikes which we can see from here it's almost like a um, it's almost like a pinecone uh, in, in, in the fact that it's uh, a spiral of, of, um, of spines that runs 360 degrees around its tail tip getting closer and closer and closer together as, as it gets to the tip of the tail which seems to be like an iron spike and it uses those spikes to kind of just dig into the side of uh, of um, uh, Thunderbolt's corpse and lift it, corpse uh, like like pushing its uh, spines through its through his shoulder. Seems to pick him up like he's on a meat hook and lifts him off of the corp off of the horse and like brings it back over the horse towards his face. Yes. What happened to this one? Huh? And uh, Oliver finds his voice. Says, she seems to be really good with a bow, and uh, managed to get Thunderbolt as he as he came out of the trees. Really? Is that so? Now I'm going to roll a deception check on Oliver's behalf, and then an insight check on the Manticore's behalf. Now, given that it was um, given that it was a uh, partially the truth. You did actually kill uh, as he ran, but he is saying so in a deceptive kind of a way. I'm going to have advantage on uh, on this deception check. So that is either a 13 or a 19. He seems to be regaining some strength in his in his uh, deception. Manticore uh, has brought. Um, has brought the the hanging limp corpse of of, uh, of Thunderbolt over right over to its face now, and is just hanging in front of it with this tail spiked through him. It turns its head towards Oliver and says, "Is that so? It looks like we might be needing a new recruit." <laughs> and just with a single a single uh, launching strike, like a dog that's just been waiting with a, a a treat on its nose for the final go word, get him! <laughs> it suddenly crunches down its mouth, uh, entirely encompassing the head of, um, of Thunderbolt, and with a sickening crack, as if it's biting through biscuit, not skull, <laughs> there is a, uh, a, a splatter of, of blood out of its mouth, and which partially coats Felicity, given that it, he's doing so within, like, a few feet from her face. It seems not a coincidence that, uh, that he's doing so. I'm going to put it to a put it to the uh, a yes or no. Do you do we attack now or do we wait? Put a yes if you want to attack now. Put a no if you want to wait. If it becomes too close to tell by emotes alone, then I'll put it to a proper poll. But it seems like the yeses might have it at this stage. So if you're watching and you haven't voted, make sure you put in the chat if you want to attack or wait.
most people saying yes is it's going to go yes it's going to go towards the yes as we've only got one two three four five people saying no so far a part of apis wants to uh to 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 go along with this whole new recruit idea and get some rest and and attack in the morning when we're fully rested but most people uh, wanting wanting to take advantage of the fact that he's currently distracted with a um, with a mouthful of food. All right, I am going to put it to a poll. It's going to be a two minute poll because it's a quick snap decision. What are we doing? Yes or no? Attack right now. We see this Manticore uh, using this intimidation tactic tactic of crunching down on this uh, human skull and body right like feet away from the the uh, scared Felicity. If we wait, he might take. He might kill the horse and take the weapons. That's a good point. There are benefits and drawbacks to both. If we wait, there's a good chance he might kill the horse and eat it. If we don't wait, and uh, sorry, if we do wait, then we might get a full rest and be able to learn where its lair is and kill it and kill it when we're fully rested. So there's positives and drawbacks to both, as with any decision in D and D. It's coming down to the last few seconds. Ooh, you see, this is why I love Twitch Tales. It always comes down to the last couple of votes. With 21 to 16, 57% to 43%, Apis is in two minds about whether or not it's right to attack now or wait. Or wait. But ultimately, seeing this, seeing this manticore devour a humanoid skull as if it was made out of biscuit, Apis decides that they don't want to take the risk in waiting, they don't want to take the risk that the, this thing will see through our deception and attack us. Apis is perhaps fueled a little bit by the fear of becoming the next corpse in its mouth and decides in this very moment, just at the very second that it <laughs> crunches down and, and, and sprays blood, bone and, and brain matter over Felicity, Apis decides this is it, it's now or never. And at that moment, Apis gives the command word to the rope to drop. The rope drops from our body. We shout, NO! Uh, we reach out our hand and grab the um, the longbow from Morn, who had it ready to give to us at a moment's notice. And we will go into initiative order. The manticore, when I rolled for its insight, got a nat 20. So even though Oliver got us 19 on his deception, the Manticore knew that there was something up. So this will not be a surprise round on the Manticore, unfortunately. But at least we'll not it won't get a free attack against us either. Alright, so first let's roll an initiative for Mel. Mel, that's 15 plus 4. That's a 19 for Mel. Mel's probably going first in the initiative. Awesome. Uh, for Apis, Apis is going to get an initiative of 14. Not bad. 14 plus your modifier, I think, is a plus 3, isn't it? Ever since we took dex plus 2. So that's going to be a 17. So we've got a 19 for Mel, a 17 for, for Apis. Uh, let's go our allies next. We'll go allies with the... Actually, let's go allies with the Mel dice, because Mel is an ally, so they should be also allies. Uh, 9. 9 plus the allies. I've given the allies a collective plus 2, so that's 11 for the allies. Leaving just the Manticore. I don't feel I don't feel good using Apis's dice to roll attacks against Apis and things. So let's use another let's use another dice for the Manticore. Let's use this big old dice for the the Manticore's attacks and things. Here we go. Bra nineteen. Can you see that? Nineteen. Uh, nineteen plus the Manticore's stats. Let me bring up the Manticore stat block. I've got it right here. Dexterity plus three. So they're going to get a twenty-two. So. Sorry, Mel, you're not going first after all. The Manticore was ready for it. The Manticore, having been rather insightful at realizing that there was some sort of deception going on, is going to be using this intimidation tactic and then realizing, ha, something's something's going down. So as soon as you shout now, boom, they're, they're, they're into action. So it was waiting for us to act, correct? It was trying to intimidate you into making a, a slip up. So with the initiative, the Manticore will take to the air because that's the uh, best place for it. I'm going to give it the wings to show that it's in the air. <laughs> Crunches down on his head. He, he, his eyes flick over to you as the rope drops and then he hears the, uh, you see these like lion-like ears. 
<coughs> turn towards you as the sound of you shouting no, uh, sh- shouting now. <coughs> as soon as you grab the the bow from him, his wings are already unfurling, and by the time you've drawn an arrow out of your quiver, <coughs> the wings beat down. The force of his wings beating down uh, against the the, the 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 tearing and cutting, um, shearing forces of his teeth, his many teeth on the neck of. Uh, of, of Thunderbolt <coughs> sudden juxtaposition of forces <coughs> means that the neck is completely severed at around the collarbone <coughs> and he flies off with a mouthful of skull and Thunderbo- Thunderbolt's um, uh, body hits the floor let the body hit the floor technically he's leaving Felicity's attack range but she's, she doesn't have any weapons drawn and she sure as hell's not just going to punch him as he as he flees uh, not when she's terrified of being covered in blood and viscera of um, of Thunderbolt. Um, he sees that this is some sort of uh, ambush, and so he flicks this tail round, the tail that was holding um, Thunderbolt's body. It lets Thunderbolt drop to the ground as he as he takes to the skies. He brings the tail back up over his head and then flings it in like an arc uh, beneath himself. Actually, it would it would curl all the way under. <laughs> Flings it in, in an arc, and he's going to fire three um, spines off. And he's going to fire one at Morn, one at you, and one at Oliver. <laughs> she should re- reach out and pet him. Maybe it'll calm him down. Maybe he just needs belly scratches. All right, so the one at Oliver is going to hit. The one at you is going Oh, potentially going to miss, actually. What is it? Um... Tail spike, that is a 14. 14 is exactly enough to hit. So unfortunately, that one is just going to hit. And then the one at Morn is going to miss, I think, with a... Yeah, that one's going to miss. So Morn gets missed by it, but you and Oliver take a, a tail spike, which is 1d8 plus 3 slashing. Uh, piercing, I think, actually. Get out a d8, so I don't have to taint Apis's dice by using it to hurt himself themselves sorry um this is just a single attack with three barbs it's technically three separate attacks he's got a he's got a a multi-attack with three attacks Uh, the one against oliver got minimum damage so that's only four damage to oliver he's fine uh the one against you that was cocked one against you is a seven points of damage to you so Apis takes, Apis takes seven points of damage as a huge spike, probably about four inches long, um, and seemingly made of some sort of hybridized um, metallic mineral kind of material. <laughs> Hits you and grazes right across your shoulder, <laughs> cutting like quite a deep wound right across your shoulder. Exclamation Max Skull puts you in the in the draw to to win the chance to decide what Apis is going to do on the first round of combat. When it comes to their turn, um, you will have full autonomy over what Apis does on their uh, bonus action, action, and movement. While you are deciding that, I will finish the Manticore's turn. It took to the sky. (laughs) It's probably about 30 feet off the ground. Um, Then it took a volley of three attacks at the three of you, uh, two of them hitting and one of them missing. The third one goes for, for Morn, but he whoa, dodges out of the way and shoo, it hits into the ground with quite a bit of force. I believe that's all the Manticore can do, so that is his turn done. Mel. Mel's turn. Mel is now buzzing around somewhere. Uh, and she is going to use her movement to get close to the battlefield. You did tell her to not get too far from the battlefield. Make sure she stays close enough so that if she gets in danger, she can come back to you. Or vice versa, if she's uh, if she's not in danger, maybe you can come. She can come and help you. So she flies in, using all of her movement to get to uh, pretty much there. I'll say I'll be generous and say that she can just about get to right above him. Mel flies in about sixty feet off the ground. So she's actually above him, and she's going to use her soporific spores. Recharges on a short rest, so she got it back while you were while you were resting. 
Mel shakes off a dusting of pollen which drifts downwards to form a 15 foot radius cloud up to 30 feet directly beneath, beneath her. She's going to choose 30 feet beneath her and encompass him right in the centre of this 15 foot cloud. As the, uh, as the pollen shakes from her body, it's, it, it drifts down 30 feet, like normal, not, uh, as if um, bothered by gravity. And then once it gets down to right around him, it starts to wave back and forth, making this sort of hypnotic pattern, which is going to try and put him to sleep. All creatures in the cloud must succeed on a constitution saving throw or fall asleep. The creature remains sleeping for one minute or until the sleeper takes damage. All right, so let's make a con save on his behalf. That is, oh man, that's a 19. Uh, yeah, 19 plus, plus three constitution. So he is he is not falling for this. The, uh, the, 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 the soporific spores don't seem to bother him, <laughs> but now he looks up and realizes that this giant bee is attacking and is now part of the fight as well. So she's given up her, um, given up her guise as someone who is not actually a part of the fight. Unfortunately, it did not work. That is all that Mel can do. Apis, it is now your turn. So we'll go back over to the Nightbot and we will choose... Who is it going to be? SpideyNZ! Friend of the stream, SpideyNZ. Are you still in the chat? If you are, just sneezes. Yes, I can see you there. So what are you going to do, Spidey? Apis has these things below. You have access to your longbow. You don't have your long sword, but you can grab that from um, you can grab that from uh, what's his face if you wanted it for some reason. Run behind tree for cover. Fire a planer and re-roll to hit with inspiration. Awesome! He had that ready, didn't he? All right. So let's see which uh, tree is good for cover. This one right here, I think. So you set off running. Doosh, 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 doosh. As soon as you leave this space, Morn gets an attack of opportunity on you. Which he's not going to take because he's your ally. Ha 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 ha, gotcha. You leave behind your rope of commanding, which, which you dropped in the space that you left, is what I was trying to get to. So you leave the space there and you run behind the tree for a bit of cover. You've, you've now got uh, half cover from where you are. Um, three quarters if you duck behind the tree after you've taken a shot. You then take a shot at him. He's well within range of a longbow. Damn it, Rob! <laughs> gotcha. Let's go to the dice cam. And let's see if we nail this shot or not. We're going to use a bonus action to plane a warrior first, which means that this adrenaline that's running through our system of seeing this lion-sized humanoid monstrosity um, literally eat somebody's head in a single bite it sends understandably fear running through apis's body we use this fear we use this goosebumps that suddenly rushes down our arms and we realize that that feeling that 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 feeling of static electricity running over our body is is as close as we have yet come to understanding the planar energies that lends itself to us being a horizon walker we tap into that power that 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 energy that's coursing through our skin as we pull back an arrow on the string and loose and we uh, as uh, we see the the shaft of the arrow suddenly become ethereal as it as it passes through the uh, passes past the bow it turns into force energy and all of the damage plus a d8 if we hit will become force energy uh, that is going to be a 7. 7 plus 7 is a 14. Before we know whether or, whether or not that hits, we're going to need to know whether or not we're going to re-roll it. 14. Yes in the chat or no in the chat? Sp if, I suppose it's Spidey's choice really, isn't it? Spidey, do you want to use your inspiration to re-roll that? If we've got a 14 to hit. Spidey says yes and it's his turn, so we'll re-roll it. A 3. A three, okay, so a three or a seven. We'll take the seven. We've used inspiration. Seven plus seven, seven from being a, a, a specific archer means a 14 total to hit. We fire it off. The, the wings are beating to keep, to keep itself aloft. It's got this big, thick, heavy, um, lion-like body with uh, presumably thin, uh, um, hollow bones like a bird because otherwise how the hell is it lifting itself off the ground with these wings it does have a long 
It does lo have a long um, wingspan and the leathery wings are beating. Its body is shifting up and down and up and down. It makes for a harder target. And as it's flinging its tail around, flinging um, tail spines towards us, it's, it makes for a very hard target. So our arrow <sighs> misses the mark as, it, as its wings beat down. The, arrows, the arrow flies f towards the wing and then beat and, the, and misses its mark. However, as the as the wing is coming up, the body is coming down, and it just strikes across the bottom of its body. A fourteen is its armor class, so you just hit. As you hit, uh, you deal the regular D eight of damage from a longbow plus another D eight of damage from it being plain a warrior plus a D three uh, plus a three for dexterity. So you can do this much damage to it. Brr. A 4 plus a 4 plus a 3 is an unknowable number. 11. The first damage. First blood. What are you doing? First blood. Thank you. Don't know why you just jumped up the page like that. That was your bonus action planar warrior. As the as the ethereal force damage uh, arrow misses its wing and hits it right across the belly, <laughs> cuts a big deep gash into it, and then booms, forces itself back into the material plane. Suddenly, it's no longer made of ethereal uh, force energy, but it's made of real wood and sh uh, wood and feather and um, and metal of the arrow. <laughs> and that sudden explosion of of material energy where where force energy was before suddenly does an extra d8 of damage. <laughs> Um, and now it's got an arrow sticking out of its belly. It starts to drip blood out from underneath it, but it doesn't seem like it's wounded, it, not, in, not in the least yet. It lets out a... <laughs> which is sort of like a, a roar of pain, but also excitement at having some sort of worthy adversary. It seems to get off on the thrill of a hunt. So you use movement to get behind the tree, uh, bonus action to plane a warrior, attack action with your action, and you use the last, last of your movement to step back behind the tree, granting you three quarters cover from any attacks. Awesome action, Spidey, well done. That was a very good turn of yours. Uh, now we will go back to the giveaways and we will re-roll a new thing. Exclamation mark wing, if you want to be in with a chance to decide what Apis is gonna do on the next turn of combat, W-I-N-G. But for now, it is back to the allies' turn. The allies are going to take uh, attacks of their own. Um, Morn has no attack uh, that's ranged. He's just got a battle axe. So Morn is going to start running over this way. He's going to use his whole movement to sort of spread out along the battlefield. He's going to get over here. And if the Manticore tries to flee, I guess he's get, he gets his battle axe ready and he's going to make an attack. Mon is readying himself for the trigger being if uh, if he comes within range he'll take a strike. Meanwhile, uh, uh, I was going to call him Oscar, uh, Oliver whoo, turns around and choom, without the hesitation that you saw him using against you, he has no hesitation trying to take out this monster. He takes a shot with his crossbow. Come on, you've got a, oh that was, oh that was slightly better than it would have been. Um, so it rolled up, ah, uh, not 13. Oliver, unfortunately, only has a plus four to hit, so um, that was a nine plus three. Nine, nine plus four. Boom! Fires off the crossbow, and that same sort of beating motion, but from his lower angle, it doesn't quite hit. It almost strikes. It cuts across like a, a, an inch of the shoulder, uh, but the bolt goes flying into the forest and causes no major damage to the manticore. Uh, and then Felicity, um, she starts to... She, locks, she drops the reins of the horse, who who is looking rather scared to be honest runs her hands together and creates a ball of bluish energy which she then <laughs> sends off towards the manticore she's going to cast ray of frost uh 16 plus stuff will hit so she does ray of frost damage which is uh, one one plus her is it a cantrip uh, no you don't add you don't add um modifiers to a cantrip so it's just one point of damage but some frost uh now encompasses his wings and slows his movement down He's taken 12 points total, and his movement has decreased by 10 for the next round. Uh, every little bit helps. It all, it all cuts away, eats away at him a little bit. 
Um, that is your three allies. The horse is going to go on his turn. The horse is not going to take actions other than uh, to just like defend itself. So it kind of starts to wa walk over this way. It's like backing up and whinnying. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's starting to get quite scared and it's like geeing up a, bit, a little bit. Um, getting away from this huge big monster thing that's clearly dangerous to it. That is the three allies. So it is back to the Manticore's turn. The Manticore does not like the fact that you shot it, it does not like the fact that these three have turned on it, and it says um he goes Ah, oh, traitors! I see I'm going to have a little feast! I will eat well tonight! And then he flings three uh, he does like a spiral, his, his wings come out and flaps one one way and one the other to quickly spin him on his axis in the air. <laughs> He spins around, allowing his tail to do like a 360 spin beneath him, and he flings one at each of the allies there. So he's going to go one, two, Felicity, that's going to hit. One to Oliver, that's going. That's a net one. He can't possibly hit any of his allies or anything, so that's just a miss. And one to Morn, and that is probably a hit. What is his modifier? Morn is a... Yep, that just hits. Yeah, that just hits his armor class. So Felicity and Morn are going to get a tail spike. Ooh, that's nine to Felicity. And another eight to Morn. So nine to Felicity. And what was she on before? Let's have a little look at her. Uh, she was on six. Six and, and nine takes her to 15. She's on literally one hit point left. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to note it on my, um, my notepad in front of me. It's a lot easier than using roll 20. Uh, Morn, what's he on? He had no hit, no hit points yet, no da no uh, damage yet, so he takes eight points of damage. He's not looking wounded, but Felicity definitely is. She gets struck pretty hard, um, and she was already a little bit wounded. <coughs> <coughs> he's gonna feast well tonight, he says, uh, and then he's going to. He's now he's gonna move over here, <coughs> realizing that he couldn't see you before. He's gonna move down here and does he go does he land next to you? I think he does. Wait, let me put myself in Manticore mind. He's not super smart, so he doesn't know too much about tactics. <clears throat> he knows that they can't attack him as well. No, I think he does. I think he I think it makes sense. He's going for that. He's going for the kill straight away. So he comes down and boom lands next to you. He is still slowed. Let me just check that that wasn't more than 40 movement. Yeah, he can get to you within 40 of his fly speed. Uh, so he's still slowed, but no longer flying as he lands down next to you. He's used his three attacks though, so that's his turn done. Mel, seeing that he's coming for you, has no choice but to try and follow him. She's got no soporific spores, got no summon swarm. All she's got left is her sting, so she's gonna use it. By God, is she going to use it? Bam! She comes in flying behind him, tries to stab him right in the ass. Um, come on, Mel, you got this, you got this, you got this. Dice cam on. Mel! Eight. Eight plus Mel's modifier of six is 14. 14 is exactly what she needed to hit. Go, Mel. Uh, so, he is... What, is, what does he take? Uh, 1d6 plus four piercing damage. So, he first takes... As her sting actually pierces into his body, he takes nine points of piercing damage. I've got things everywhere, I keep forgetting which ones where. Nine more points of piercing damage. And then he has to make a constitution saving throw. Or take 2d6 poison damage. His constitution saving throw is a 16 plus stuff will save. So he's going to take half the poison damage and not be poisoned. So four and another four, eight halved to four points of poison damage. Four points of poison damage. <clears throat> He's still not looking wounded yet. <coughs> As he lands down next to you, his, his mouth opens wide and you see firsthand like feet away from you, this huge big maw and it looks like he's about to try and bite you and encompass your entire head like he just did with Thunderbolt. But then as he's about to bite down, uh, you just you just get flecked with uh, flecks of spit and, 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 and blood and, and brain matter that's still in his teeth from uh, from what's-his-face's uh, head. Uh, as he yells in pain, this, this bee sticking him in the butt. 
Um, it's not a pleasant experience, but it's much more preferable for him to him actually biting you. All right, go Mel. It is now Apis's turn. Let's roll it and see who wants it. Psy-Q! Are you still in the chat, Psy-Q? Yes, you are. I can see you there. What are you going to do, Psy? Mel did not get an attack of opportunity. She was 30 feet above him. And also, Spidey, I saw your question before. Um, Planar Warrior doesn't use, an, doesn't use a spell slot. Is there a proximity attack for two flying creatures? You mean an attack of opportunity? If they are within me melee range of each other when one moves out, then yes. Shoot into his open mouth. Yeah, maybe. Redo the same thing. Planar plus blow plus hide behind a tree. Just be aware that, PsyQ, if you're trying to attack somebody in melee range with a with a ranged weapon, you have disadvantage on the attack. So you can either move away first, incurring a potential attack of opportunity from him. So Zephyr, Zephyr away to another tree and then shoot. Okay, cool. So we are going to use our last spell slot for the day. Which, to be fair, is probably a good time to use it. Pop! Pop goes the berry. So, Apis, uh, seeing this guy right up close, knowing that they need to get away, but they can't afford to get some some damage, some striking damage from that bite or them claws, <sighs> um, they realise that they've got that move like the wind ability open to them. Digging down into that ability, and it's now coming quite naturally to us. <laughs> We start to see the, the flecks of spit and brain and blood coming out of its mouth towards us. And they seem to slow down just ever so slightly. And we move to the side. We move to the other side. We step back and we see him. We see him bring up his claws in order to strike out at us. But we see them come in and we step to the side. One of them comes down beside us. Boom! This claw is the size of like a, a small dinner plate. The hand rather, the paw, is the size of a dinner plate. We managed to avoid that, casting Zephyr Strike on ourself. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Zephyr Strike for the duration, you can move like the wind. You do not attack, uh, you do not incur attacks of opportunity when you move out of people's melee range. And once during for the duration, while ever you are concentrating on it, we can one time during this spell uh, you, uh, use to get, give ourselves advantage on an attack. So we are now more than five feet away from him, Psyche. Are we going to um, are we going to use this uh, this this uh, once per once per spell ability. It's no use to heal if it heals less than the damage it's about to do. Yeah, that's pretty that's pretty much the case. Not always the case, but it's it's quite often the case that if you're healing less than the damage that you're about to take, there's no real point doing the healing. It's better to save it for when somebody goes down to zero, and then you can prevent them doing death saves. So move enough that we can get into the cover at the next tree also, please. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And we are going to use that. Yes, okay. So we are going to use it. So we will we will move away. So that was f five feet. And then we keep backing away. We turn and run. We run around this tree here. That's 30 feet or oh, close enough. Oh, actually, we've only got 25 feet, haven't we? Hmm, so we can't actually make it to this tree or this tree. We could make it around this tree. Or we could make it around this tree, maybe. Because we're a dwarf with little legs. I think, are we going to move behind here so that we get closer to our uh, rope of entanglement as well? We'll say yes. It doesn't really make too much of a difference, I guess. Does Zephyr give more movement? Yes, it does, actually. Yeah, it gives only with... Forgetting Zephyr. If you choose to use the, um, the once per spell um, advantage that it gives you, it also gives you an extra 30 feet. And we are going to use the advantage because we want to make sure that we kill this guy. So for the rest of this round, we actually do have uh, uh, 55 movement, not 25. <clears throat> so we'll say as the Apis steps back, we see this claw coming down. Boom! We make sure to get far enough away that it can't swipe our uh, hand and our bow to the side. As we draw out one of the arrows, knock it and shoo, fire it with advantage. Without advantage, that would be a six, but with advantage, it is a four. Great. Um, unfortunately, a six plus seven is 13, which, as we know, is just below its armor class. So we start, we, we move back, we lose the arrow, uh, we've used our bonus to cast Zephyr, so we can't also play in a warrior, 
Unfortunately, as it roars, it sees this arrow coming in and then it just flattens its body down to the ground at the last second. You see it nicks across one of its ears and it cuts, it gives it that sort of dog-eared uh, look to its its lion-like um, uh, pinna. It cuts through some blood splatters, but not enough to cause it any real damage. But then, because we've used the Zephyr Strike ability, we now have enough movement to run the hell away. We have used five, so we've got another 50 feet of movement. 50 feet of movement will go... Uh, da, 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 da. Which tree do we want to get behind? There's 30 feet there. Or we could go even further and get behind one of these ones for another 20. Fudge something. No, we've got a dice cam. There's no fudging now. Out of his range and still get cover. Yet we are oh, we are well over here. We're still wearing cover behind this little bush here. Um, and so we still have the uh, three quarters cover range from where we are. All right, um, that is our turn then. It is back to the top of the, oh no, it's back to allies. Allies round, okay. So um, Oliver will restring his, uh, re-arm um, his crossbow and doof, from where he is, take an attack at the manticore. Come on, Oliver. Ah, two. Uh, his shaking hand poof, is not not quite steady enough and the, the crossbow misses. Uh, he's going to then duck down behind here just to get a little bit of cover between the log and the the bush. Um, what's her face has some has ray of frost. From where she is, he has half cover, so she's going to move. She's going to move past the dead body of her. I won't say friend, but she's going to use her whole movement to get all the way to behind this bush here, and take a ray of frost attack at him. Ray of Frost is, oh my god, seven. Uh, seven plus her modifier. Nope, not enough. She can't hit him. And the Ray of Frost burn before has now um, melted off of his wings, so he's got his movement back again. His full movement. Start the next draw. If you want to be in with a chance to decide what Apis is going to do on the next round of combat, uh, exclamation mark, uh, exclamation mark bow. B-O-W. <laughs> we had we had we had a nat twenty when it when it mattered, um, and now it's back to negative uh, all single digit rolls. All right, uh, then our last ally is is Morn over here. He is going to run, 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 charging down. He is going to get all the way to the uh, the Manticore with his dash action. But he's now in melee with the Manticore, <laughs> and he's got his battle axe, <laughs> and he's gonna try and charge him down that is our allies turn the horse is going to continue moving <coughs> rushing off into the woods to get to safety away from the the roaring rumbling manticore it is back to the manticore's turn the manticore seeing Morn run up behind him and and mel striking at him <coughs> is going to turn around and make two claw attacks uh one at Morn and one at mel the one at Morn is going to hit. The one at Mel is going to prob probably miss. I think it's a uh, yeah, no, that's definitely missed. Uh, and so that, for, that in that way, it's going to go for a bite attack against Mel. Cocked. And uh, that'll hit. So he will. A claw attack is not as bad as his bite attack actually. Uh, so Mon takes another eight points of slashing damage, and Mel also takes. Oh no, I rolled the wrong dice. Mel takes. Oh, one good. Uh, four points of bite damage. Mel is down to twenty-six. She's still looking fine, but Mon is not looking too good because he's taken another eight on top of that, so now he's wounded. The Manticore has taken three actions. It does not want to be in combat with these guys anymore. So it is going to, it's going to take to the skies again. By doing so, it's going to leave both melee rangers. <laughs> um, it takes off and starts flying off. Um, as, it, as, as it does, so Morn brings down a battle axe. Oh yes, that's going to hit. The 16 to hit and a battle axe. Hey, not bad. 
Five plus three is eight. It takes a further eight slashing damage from Morn, taking him to 33 damage. And then Mel is gonna take her attack of opportunity. Mel, here we go. 18 plus stuff is definitely gonna hit. So he takes uh, ugh, one plus four, is it? Yeah, so five more points of piercing damage first. Five more points of piercing. And then he makes a constitution saving throw. Hey, three. Against his poison, right? Against the poison. Yeah, that's going to fail. So he's going to take the full amount of the poison. Four and another two. Six points. And if it takes him to zero, which it doesn't, um, he would have been paralyzed. As it is, he is now looking wounded. Uh, that's the sting, the summon, if that's all she can do. Um, thankfully he has a very low intelligence it seems, so he didn't know not to leave their melee range without disengaging. So he takes off from there, he's gonna fly off after you because he heard that you're a, uh, you're good with, um, you're good with a bow. Um, it, it, he's gonna stay going to stay in the air around here. Oops, sorry, I didn't go back to the map when I was moving him. There he is, he's over there. Uh, he is not still frozen, no, Ray of Frost lasts for one round, and she f she missed with Ray of Frost this round. That's the Manticore's turn. Um, Mel, Mel is now going to chase after him and give him a wee sting again. Can she get to him? She should be able to, she, he's got the same speed as she does. So she gets all the way up to him with all of her movement and she's going to make an attack. Go Mel, it's your birthday. Go Mel, it's your birthday. Here! 16 plus stuff will hit. Mel's doing all the damage. And a 6 plus 4, 10 points of piercing damage. As she strikes into him, he takes that and then he takes a constitution saving throw. A 2, he's going to fail again. It seems like his constitution is cutting out for him. An extra one plus three, an extra four points of poison damage courses into his system. If it takes him to zero, he's paralyzed, but it doesn't. <laughs> he yells out in pain, realizing the danger of this giant bee that he should have uh, taken out a long time ago. Uh, then I'll go back to this area. That was all of Mel's turn. It is now Apis's turn. So who is in charge of Apis this round? Trouble with the Tarns. Can you let me know that you're still in the chat? Yes, I can see you there. How are you going? Um, do you or would you ever run a Roll20 D&D &D session with us Twitch viewers able to join? That is exactly what you're doing right now, Trouble with the Tarns. And you actually have the chance to do so right now. What a perfect timing for you. Smack him with the longbow, of course! All right, so we're going to get the, uh, uh, the bow out and make an attack. Are you going to use Planar Warrior as your bonus action? Or do you have other ideas for what to do with your bonus action? Planar Warrior, if you're unfamiliar with Horizon Walkers, as a bonus action, you can you can imbue your next attack with um, with an extra d8 force damage. Planar warrior, awesome. So the fact that it's chasing you down, seemingly it's 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 focusing on you as the main threat on the battlefield. But given given that this massive, humongous predator, the size of a lion but with dragon-like wings and a, a spiny tail, is coming for you, that's sufficiently. Um, exhilarating that you've got this energy within yourself that you attribute to the planes around you and you focus on that you let loose an arrow let's see if you hit 19 19 plus your modifiers will hit for sure it is gonna do oh sorry i rolled i rolled his dice instead of your dice Ace it, apis my bad uh it's gonna do this much damage 8 plus 4, that's 12 points of damage, plus 3 from your dexterity. It's going to do 15 points of damage to him. 15 points of damage takes him to 70... something. 73. 73 damage. Manticores have 68 damage. So Apis, Apis Hive, how would you like to kill him? This is open to you all. Check that out, Trouble with the Tarns. 
your very first time in, 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 in Twitch Tales, you pop along, you say, do you ever do Twitch Tales where we can join in? And I say, yes, you can, and you're the one in charge, and you get the kill on the Manticore. What a perfect time for you to join. So, describe it, everybody. What do you reckon happens? How does this arrow strike its, ha strike its target? Does it go through its eye? Does it go through its open mouth as it's, as it's screaming? Does it hit it in the chest and, and puncture its heart? Does it hit it in the wing and, put, and force it to fall to the ground and then it snaps its neck? What, what happens? Shoot it in the mouth. Shoot it through the face. Sell the manticore parts to the highest bidder. Shoot it in the nostrils. <laughs> Pierces through the chest and nails it to the tree behind it. Ooh, I like that. I like that. The arrow's not big enough to do so, but it'll, it'll be cool flavor. All right, so Apis lines it up. Feels that tingling running down their, their arms and lets that imbue itself into planar energy. Shoo, lets the arrow loose. As the shaft of the arrow passes by the handle of the bow, it seems to be disappearing out of this plane of existence and into the ethereal plane. We can just about see this trail, this conical trail, as if it's like a sonic boom heading behind it. Shoo, as everything around it seems to turn grey for a moment. And as this, bee, as this bee companion of ours comes to our rescue and stabs him right in the side of the haunches, <laughs> he screams out again in pain, <laughs> and his head rears back, his, his feet come up, and you see one of them, <laughs> the, the claws come out, and it's about to strike down and kill Mel, or try to. But as he strikes, as he, as he leans back for the strike, he gets himself ready and opens up his chest. Our arrow, in this planar energy that we can barely even see anymore, strikes it right in the target, right through the sternum of this beast. <laughs> it turns itself. We just see the uh, the fletching of the arrow as it booms itself back into the, the material plane, <laughs> exploding force energy into his chest. <laughs> the arrow goes disappearing right through the fur of the, um, the manticore's furry uh, lion-like chest. <laughs> And it seems to, from the from the force of its wings being pushed forwards, we realise that the arrow must have pierced all the way back through its uh, its body. The the wings instantly go limp and boom fall to the ground, as a dark red puddle starts to emerge on its chest. And with that, I will leave it there for today, and we will pick up here next time for episode twenty seven of Twitch Tales. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you next week. Bye!